Let's take a look at the problem. 13 plus 3, close parentheses, minus 5. What do we do? By now you should know, always do what's inside the parentheses. And inside the parentheses is 13 plus 3. That's what we do first. That's going to be 16. So we can kind of write that with the parentheses around there. We still have to do the minus 5. Now the parentheses here around the 16, they don't mean anything anymore because we've already done the operation. So 16 minus 5. 16 minus 5 is 11, and that is the final answer. All of these problems will be worked the same way. Let's take a look at problem number 2. Let's say we have 16 times 2. And we're going to then close the parentheses out and add 4. What do we do first? We always do what's inside the parentheses, 16 times 2. Now you may not remember what 16 times 2 is, so go over here and figure it out. 16 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 more is 3. So the answer that we get here is 32. Now we can put parentheses around it, but really it, it, they disappear once you do the operation. So it's 32 plus 4. The next thing we have to do is to add 32 plus 4, which is 36. And that's the final answer, 36. All right. So you see the numbers are getting slightly bigger, but that doesn't change anything about what we're doing. Now let's crank up the complexity just a little bit by taking a look at 5 uh, times 6 minus 1, close parentheses, minus 2. So we have a nested, a double set of parentheses. Remember in the last lesson we said, if you ever have one set of parentheses inside of another set, then all you do is you go to the innermost one first. So the way you kind of think about it is you're like, well, okay, I have to do the parentheses first. I'm going to do what's inside of here first. But what is inside of here is yet some other junk with another set of parentheses. So I must do this first. So the 6 minus 1 is really going to be the first thing I'm going to do. What is 6 minus 1? It's 5. I can drop this set of parentheses here, but I still have to multiply by 5, and I still have the outermost set of parentheses. Basically, the 6 minus 1 became 5. I still have to multiply by this, and I still have the other set of parentheses. So now I need to do this set of parentheses. 5 times 5. That's 25. And again, I can drop the parentheses once I do the calculation. I still have the minus 2. 25 minus 2 going down is 23. 23 is the final answer. All right, making good progress. Let's take a look at 10 times parentheses 8 minus 3. What do we do? Always what's in the parentheses inside of the parentheses first. So what do we have? 8 minus 3. That's going to be 5, right? So we put a 5 here, but we and we can drop the parentheses at that point after we calculate the answer but we still have to multiply by 10 because all we did was this first. We still have the multiplication times 10 to do. 10 times 5 is 50. That's the only thing left. And so 50 is the final answer to that problem. All right, let's take a look at a bigger problem. Let's take a look at 22 and we'll add to that open parentheses, 3 times, open another set of parentheses, 5 minus 1, close, close. This parenthesis goes with this one, and this pair goes together as well. So we have to do the innermost parentheses first, this one. Because we look at the whole thing, we say, well, we must do what's inside here first, but what is inside of here is yet another set of parentheses. We must then do this one first. 5 minus 1 is 4. I can drop this parentheses around the 4 after I do the calculation, but I still have to do the multiplication by the 3 and I still have the, the addition of the 22. All I've done is add these together, uh, I'm sorry, done this subtraction here, and then this remains the same inside the parentheses. So now what do I do? I have the 22 still left to do. I have to do what's inside of here first. 3 times 4 is 12. Again, I could put the parentheses here, but I'm going to drop them anyway. So as soon as you do the calculation, you can drop the parentheses. Now what is 22 plus 12? Maybe I don't remember that. So go off to the side. 22, 12. 4 right here, 3 right here, and so the answer is 34. And 34 is the final answer. All right, that was the halfway mark of these problems. Let's take a look at 70 plus parentheses 3 plus parentheses 3 times 5, close parentheses, close parentheses. This is the innermost set of parentheses. I must do this one first. So I say, what is 3 times 5 anyway? Well, it's going to be 15. 
but I still have the plus three to do. All of that is still encapsulated in the outer parentheses, and then I still have the plus 70. So now at this step, what do I do? I do the parentheses again. Three plus 15 is going to be 18, and then I still have to add the 70. I can drop the parentheses after I do the calculation. So what is 70 plus 18? We have an eight here, and we have an eight here, and so the answer is 88. 88 is the final answer. All right, making good progress. One step at a time, that's how we do this. Do not try to do too many things in your mind. Students will say, oh, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do, and try to do it all in your head and you're just going to make a mistake. So don't do that. Let's take a look at 25 multiplied by parentheses eight plus one, close, close, times two. Well, we look at the whole thing and we say, well, I have to do what's inside of this parentheses, but what is inside of there is yet another set of parentheses, so I have to do this one first. The eight plus one becomes a nine. I still have to multiply by the 25, and then I still have the outer parentheses here. All I did was this first, that's it. I still have to do this. What is 25 times nine? I don't actually know. So I go off to the side and try to figure out what is 25 times nine. Nine times five is 45, I carry the four. Nine times two is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 225. So inside of here is 200. 25. I can drop these parentheses after I've calculated what's inside. I have to multiply times 2. So I go off to the side and I say, well, what is 225 times 2? 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 more is 5. 2 times 2 is 4. Answer is 450. 450, that's the correct answer. That's the final answer. All right, just a couple more problems. And we are done with this. Let's take a look at 123 minus open parentheses, open and other parentheses, 8 times 2, close, minus 10, close. How do we handle this? Well, we ignore everything except the parentheses. And inside of this set, we have another set. So we have to do the 8 times 2 first. 8 times 2 is what? 16. And then we still have to subtract 10, and all of that is still wrapped in the outer parentheses. And then this 123 minus whatever is over here is still there. All we've done is done this operation first. Now we have to do this set of parentheses. What is 16 minus 10? It's just six. We can drop the parentheses after we calculate, and now we have 123 minus six. We go down. 122, 121, 120, 119, 118, 117. 117 is the final answer. You could set it up and subtract over there if you want, but the answer is 117. All right, only two more problems. Here we go. Now I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball at you here. Let me show you this. Let me get the whole thing down, then I'll explain. Here's a curly brace, and then we're going to have a six plus uh, double parentheses, three plus one, close, times three, close, closing curly brace, times four. Now, what does this mean? So what we have here is you can have parentheses inside of each other, but if you have like a bunch of parentheses three or four levels deep inside of each other, it gets very hard to keep track of it because all the parentheses look the same. So what you might see is curly braces. This is just another set of parentheses with a special shape. This curly brace goes with this one. This parenthesis goes with this one. This one goes with this one. You can also, instead of curly braces, you might see like a bracket, three plus two plus one. And it's very easy to see. The brackets go together and the parentheses go together. Here, the curly braces go together. You just treat them like parentheses. That's all you do. So what do we have? We have a set of parentheses here. We go inside. But now we have a set of parentheses here. So we go inside. We have a set of parentheses here. We must do the three plus one first, which is a four. We can drop this set of parentheses and it's gonna be now four times three from here. The curly brace will be here. The plus six will be uh, here and then we still have times four. Now what do we do? We go on the inside. Innermost parentheses, four times three is 12. We still have this plus six. We have this curly brace right here, times four. Now what do we have? We have to do what's inside the parentheses, which are just, they're just fancy parentheses or curly braces. What is 12 plus six or six plus 12? It's gonna be 18. We can drop the curly braces 
after we calculate, we still have to multiply by four. What is 18 times four? I don't know. Let me go over here and figure it out. 18 times four. Eight times four is 32. Four times one is four, and then three more is seven. And so the answer that we get from all of this stuff is 72. That's the final answer. So if you ever see weird looking parentheses, don't freak out, don't worry about it. It's just another, another set of parentheses. If you start stacking three or four levels of parentheses up, it gets very hard to figure out where the partner parenthesis goes with. So we can use these curly braces. We can also use brackets. So let me show you that in the next problem. All right, what if we have three times, now I'll use a bracket here, five plus double parentheses, 26 minus nine, then I'll close one off, then I'll have multiply by four, I'll close another off, and then I'll have another bracket here. So how do we read this? It means this parenthesis goes with this one, this parenthesis goes with this one, and then these brackets go together, and, and the reason we use brackets instead of another set of parentheses is because if I put parentheses, it gets hard to read, so we can easily read the brackets. I could have used curly braces if I wanted to. So I look at the brackets. I got to do what's in here first. Inside is another set of parentheses, but inside here is yet another set of parentheses, so I have to do 26 minus nine. What is 26 minus nine? Uh, you can count backwards, or you can just think 26 minus 10 would be 16, but it's actually minus nine, so it has to be 17 in there. So 26 minus nine is 17. So we'll put a 17 down there. All right, so 26 minus nine is just a 17, and now I have this parentheses here times four, this parentheses here, the closing bracket is here, I have the plus five with the opening bracket here, and then the times three. All I have done is I have the five is from here, I've done this, I've made it 17, the times four is the same as it was before. Now what is 17 times four? I have to go off to the side and do that. 17 times four. Seven times four is 28, and two times, uh, four times one is four, five, six. So the answer I get is 68 for this number. So put a 68 right here. I can drop those parentheses now, and then I have plus five, I still have to multiply by three after I'm done with all that. So I have to do what's inside of the brackets first. What is 68 plus five? Just go up. 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. So what I have here is 73. I can drop the brackets now and I have to multiply by three. So what is 73 times three? 73 times three, three times three is nine and nine times, I'm sorry, seven times three is 21. So I get an answer of 219. That is the final answer. So at the beginning of this lesson, if I had shown you something like this in the beginning, or this, or even something like this in the beginning, at the very beginning of the lesson, you would have been like, whoa, that's too hard, because it looks hard. But once you start with simple problems, very simple problems, problems that everybody can understand, problems like this, do what's inside of the parentheses first, then whatever you get, you just follow the rest of the problem. And then we slowly make it a little more complicated with the double parentheses, and a little more complicated with the double parentheses, until finally we end up, at the end of it, after all of doing all this practice, getting to problems like this, and showing you step by step how to think about it, then you can conquer it. The other advice I'll give you, write your work down just the way I have done it. A lot of students will say, oh, three plus one is, four, and then four times three is 12, and then 12 plus six is this. But eventually you will make a mistake. You have to show your work. So please understand this, practice these, and follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna conquer in a little more detail the concept of the order of operations. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.